Right, folks, it's the 18th. I think it's the 18th of March. Yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, but no, it wasn't mentioned a lot. There's no, St. George's wasn't either. There's too much going on in the Ukraine and the horrors, destruction, the flattening of the totally raising whole towns, killing people. The, the numbers are going up and up and up. The latest figure is 20,000 Ukrainians have been killed. I can remember when it was like 14 in just over a week. Now they're flattening because they can't get their soldiers and tanks because the defence is so good by the Ukrainians. They're using cruise missiles from a distance now and just literally obliterating what were once lovely little towns like Aleppo. Everyone compares it to Aleppo and that's what they're doing. That's the tactics they are using to destroy and to demoralize the Ukrainian people who are putting up such a fight. In the peace talks they want really for them to submit. Basically, give up their arms. Basically saying, give up their arms and respect the Russian language. Now most of us realize that the Russian people have been, are repressed anyway. So they get, they still have those um, vans in the night come and take people away. And apparently it started to happen in the Ukraine. Intellectuals, people who speak out are being, are disappearing already. <clears throat> apparently that's what they said last night. But because you've got to be careful it was President Trump who first really brought it to our light about, I'm not supporting him exactly, but he did bring it out, fake news. I, I remember the, him saying that a lot. And um, it's true though. There's so much on both sides. You don't always know what to believe. <sighs> yeah, it's quite a worry really. Anyway. I've got off the bus at Winscombe and I'm going up the West Mendip Way. The aim today is to try and go through some fields where maybe the cows aren't out yet. The last time I did a walk I'm going to do a bit later, I was coming from the opposite direction of down here and I risked going through a field of black bullocks quite big bu bullocks they were and a lot of them <laughs> now the reason I'm doing it this way is if I've said to myself you are not to go in that and take that risk again so if the black bullocks are in the field it'll only take me 10 minutes to redirect to not do that route as opposed to when I was coming the other way after a long hike to redirect you would need another hour and you don't really and that's why I took the risk because I was tired I needed to get the bus or so I go this way there is a similar situation later when I go after I've been to Longwood, because the, the idea really, in many ways today, I must remember to tuck my jeans in, in a second, is to walk through Longwood. Not do all of it, but just walk through it, just to see what progress they've made in maintenance there, which they said they were going to do with the ash dieback. Uh, and I, I honoured what they said and kept out. I kept out of the Longwood all winter, like they said. They might have finished ages ago, but I will have to come back to Longwood another day, though. It'll be a shorter walk, though. Um, and it w it'll be in um, end of April, May, to see the bluebells and the white garlic display. And hopefully it hasn't been affected by the wood maintenance. So, we've had a bit of mist. This is supposed to be a pretty good day. No rain. 
and um, there's been quite mist early in the morning. It's clearing now. We should get some spectacular views. Well, what I'm doing at the moment, and I've got to stop in a minute to tuck my bottoms into my socks because it's starting to get, as you can see, which is very common here, um, very mucky. Now, what I noticed the last time I came up this way, not down, when I came up it, how improved and widened it had been. And how good it was. There wasn't any muck. But you do expect there to be a lot of wet. This time of year, you expect it. But they had done things to the ground to get rid of the huge deep trenches that are formed but they're already beginning this is the early stages but the, the trenches were very very deep and uh, so what I'm going to do I'm just going to stop over at this um, gate and tuck my socks in early before I start spreading the muck all up my trousers so Sir Sheila a walk I've done many, many times, and I'll be going up there. I know there's probably a way through the field. I never do it, though. It has been a bit tidy, but as you can see, the troughs are starting to appear. And then we've got a nice view over there of Wavery Down, which will be a walk I will be doing probably in the next month. I would do the Crook's Peak Walk right up over the top there. You can see the stone wall. I'll end up right up on the top there, going to Crook's Peak. That's one of my walks I do at least once a year. But the thing is, I was planning to do it in reverse this year. Coming from Weston this way, because I normally I get off at Winscombe and I do that walk that way, usually always. There's a picture that I got when my sister passed away. They gave me a picture of her standing by a gate like this. And I've often wondered, is it, is it this gate? Where was she standing when that picture was taken? The buds are on the trees, folks. It's spring in three days' time. It'll be officially spring. The birds are chirping. Some of the trees are taking a risk. And that mound there has got some significance, hasn't it? Got to, hasn't it? That's got to be a barrow, I would have thought. Right, over note for a minute. 